Okay, everybody, welcome. In this week's video, we're gonna take uh, maybe one last look here. We're gonna talk about the Universal Audio Recording, Lunar Recording Systems, and I wanna talk to you about the eight things that I really don't like about this DAW, now that I've used it a bit, and the eight things that I think Universal Audio needs to pay attention to, and they need to correct uh, if they really wanna compete with other DAWs. Now, before we get started, at the end of the video, I'm gonna ask you, but I'm gonna say it now, if you uh, have additional things that you, uh, that you don't like about the uh, Lunar recording system or things that you found that could be improved, I want you to leave comments below this video because I want us, hopefully maybe Universal Audio will take a look at this video at one point or someone on their team and they'll address some of these things. Now, uh, before we get to the eight things that I think are just really lacking in this DAW, because I get asked about Luna ever since it's come out. I have so many of my students and followers that email me about this. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And for the last few weeks, I've done a few different videos on the things I like. I showed you some of the plugins that come, uh, the Neve Summing plugin, et cetera, et cetera and gave you a basic walkthrough and layout. And since that time, I've had time to play with it. And I've come up with these things that I think it's really lacking. But I will say from the start, and anyone that's been following me for a long time knows, and if you're someone new here, welcome, um, but you don't know that I am a huge, 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 huge Universal Audio, uh, you know, fanboy or advocate, as you can say. I've been using them since the early 2000s. I had the UAD-1 PCIe card when it first came out way back, uh, over 15 years ago, I would say by now. Um, and I've been using their plugins ever since. I have a Universal Audio Apollo interface. I've had several different Universal Audio products over the years, um, and I love their stuff. I think their plugins are some of the best on the market. I have in a, in a pretty good size Universal Audio satellite system with uh, two octo uh, satellite, two systems, two quads, and then I have a, a quad Universal Audio Apollo. So I am a supporter of Universal Audio. So let's get that out of the way. I'm not just here to bash this because um, I think as a DAW for their first release, version one, um, it's pretty good. And I talked about in the other videos, the things I do like about it from a mixing perspective, because that's generally what I do. Although this is really built uh, for the for recording is really where I think it shines. Um, and there are a lot of other videos on YouTube that you can check out. But so, so let's get that out of the way. I love Universal Audio. I think they're great. But I think this DAW is really lacking in certain areas I want to talk about that. So the first thing I want to talk about, the very first thing is the number one complaint that I hear in email and in comments. And when I did a live stream a few weeks ago, people were all you know, we got their shorts in a bunch over this is that as of the recording of this video, and we are here on April 21st, 2020, Luna is not PC compatible, which is astonishing to me. It's a Mac only system. Now you can use your Apollo and you can use your satellite systems and all their plugins you can use with Windows PC. Why would they release a DAW and not and alienate half of the uh, of their prospective buyers? Even though Luna is a free download, but anyone that was thinking about possibly pulling the trigger and getting into the Universal Audio ecosystem with their hardware, if you're a PC user, this would have been the thing that might have tipped the scale for you for all the other good things that Luna has in it. But to not be compatible with PC makes absolutely no sense to me. Now, will it ever be? I got to imagine it will be. But as far as I know and all the information I've read on their website as of the recording of this video, it's not even mentioned that it's coming soon, which is a big, big miss. And I'm sure they know that. And my guess is there's plans for it. But right now, just so you know, if you're a PC user and you want to know if you can use the Lunar Recording System, the answer is no, you cannot. You cannot. Will it ever be? I don't know. So that's the first thing that I think is just a big miss for Universal Audio. And they should really address that. And I got to imagine that they will. Or at least let's hope so. So give our PC Windows users a little bit of love. The second thing that I think is really kind of strange and just kind of um, a nuisance and turns off a lot of people, although I don't feel that it's that big of a deal, but a lot of people hate the fact that you need to have an iLock to use Luna which doesn't make any sense to me. When you first log on and you open up Luna, you have to log in with your Universal Audio account. And I go, okay, that makes sense. It seems a little strange, but okay, you got to log in the first time. And then you have to have an iLock, which is really strange. You say, well, why do you have to have an iLock if you have a Universal Audio interface and you have hardware inside and you have DSP chips and memory chips? There's got to be a way that you can do that where you don't need an iLock. A lot of people don't like an iLock. So if you have to have an iLock present with you, um, it really hurts the mobility part of this as well. And we'll talk about that in the next in the next uh, item. Um, so having an iLock is kind of strange. I mean, personally, I've been using an iLock for years. A lot of 
plug-in manufacturers are on our iLock, but as we're moving forward, I see a lot more plug-in manufacturers are advertising the fact that they're not, you don't need an iLock, or um, you can't have it on an iLock if you wanna take your iLock with you to different studios, you always have your plugins with you, that's the benefit. Um, but people don't like the fact that you have to have an iLock. People have had problems with iLock, I lock sometimes crash, they go down. I've had that happen to me. So again, something I think Universal Audio really needs to look at. Do you really need to have an iLock? Maybe you make it so yes, you have to have an iLock if you want to take it portable. But as long as you're logged into your Universal Audio account, what's the difference? And that brings me to my third point is not only do you have to do that, but you also have to have Luna. You have to have your hardware, your Universal har Audio hardware, um, present with you. So in other words, you just can't put Luna on your laptop and take it on the road unless you have a universal audio interface with you, which seems kind of strange to me. So the fact that you need to have an iLock, you would think that you would just be able to take it with you if you wanted to say mix a record on the road from your laptop on a plane or something like that. You can't do that without the universal audio hardware, which is a little strange to me. Now I know that has to do with the fact that you, if you want to use their plugins, the universal audio plugins, you have to have the hardware to run it off the DSP chip. That makes sense. But there used to be a time where you used to be able to have one of these little um, satellite cards that you can insert into a laptop. You would think they would be able to do the same thing with the iLock or a dongle or something. There has to be, with all the technology today, it seems pretty silly to me that you have to have their hardware with you. Now again, maybe this will change as we go forward, but as of the recording of this video, you have to have the hardware. So that makes Luna, from a portability standpoint, kind of lacking. It almost really becomes more of a hassle. Um, than what it's worth, especially with the fact that you can use, which is one of the good things about Luna, you can use third-party plugins with it. So if you have native third-party plugins on your laptop, you could use that with Luna if Luna didn't have to see the hardware. So again, I don't understand that, but once again, that's something that hopefully uh, they'll address, but that's another, I think again, where you, you alienate part of the per perspective customer market. You don't, you're not compatible with PC and it's not very portable friendly or mobile friendly. That really, you just lost a huge amount of pers perspective customers in my opinion for what it's worth. So again, I think that's something, and again, keep make, if you're someone that's not sure about Luna, be aware of those things, okay? Because those things may decide for you whether or not Luna's a good idea or not. The next point, uh, point number three here is that as of the recording of this video, you can't export your session as an MP3. You can only export it as a WAV file or an AIFF file, which I can't even believe that. So if you wanted to do a quick mix down and put it up on your website or do something like that, you have to export it as a wave and then you have to get another file converter program or application to convert it to an MP3. It would seem to me that that would be an easy thing to add and I can't believe that was overlooked. Again, seems kind of silly to me. MP3 is what 90% of the people use today, especially when they're using things on the web or sharing files back and forth in email and stuff. A WAV file is just way too large for that. Yes, it's higher resolution, but it's just way, way, way too large. Um, you have to use file sharing applications like Dropbox or Google Drive or some of these other things. So again, another point, um, I think they missed the boat on that, that you can't, you can't mix down as an MP3. So be aware of that. The next point, I think this is point number four, point number five, I lost track, but the next point is that currently, um, Universal Audio doesn't support surface controls. So you can't use something like a, a PreSonus fader port or anything with physical faders. Now that's a little strange to me because Universal Audio is really the analog recording system in the digital world that they really boast and all their plugins are around analog hardware, which is what's awesome about Universal Audio and why I love them so much. You would think that right out of the box, you would have support to use um, surface control, a fader port, or some of these other soft tubes, some of these other kinds of hardware controllers. We have physical faders to make the analog mixing and recording experience a little bit more complete. That's where Universal Audio really sits as far as their plugins and all of the all the stuff that they're known for is they're known for uh, not only making amazing uh, analog hardware, 1176, LA2A, blah, 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 but that their plugins emulate these awesome pieces of old hardware in the digital world. 
And so you would have thought that you would have surface control. That's another thing that I think is a big miss and hopefully coming in the future. Another small point that may not be big to a lot of people, but is big to someone like me, especially as a mixing engineer, is you can't save session templates. Um, mixing templates, recording templates, those types of things. You can't do that inside of Luna as of today. Now, every modern DAW, you can do that. Not sure why you can't do that. I've tried and I've looked around and I've tried to figure it out. Can't seem to. If you know of a way to do that, please leave comments below and let us know because I don't know everything about Luna. I'm still scratching the surface, but I noticed and have researched and have heard other people say on social media, you can't save templates. Again, that's a big, big, a big miss in my opinion. It's something for me that is really important. I use templates all the time to save on workflow, to be able to call up a session and already have all my Neve summing plugins and all that stuff on here like you see in the session before you would be really nice to have to start from scratch all the time as a real drag. So that might be something else that can be added or something if there's another workaround, please leave it in the comments below. Uh, the other uh, item, the next item on the list is that uh, currently, you cannot, when you record a MIDI track with some of their MIDI instruments, uh, you cannot bounce in place and convert that MIDI to an audio file. Okay, you can't do that easily today. In every other modern DAW, you can highlight the MIDI event, right click and convert it or transform it or bounce it in place, whatever the DAW, uh, you know, terminology they use for that function. You can't do that currently. Um, the only way to really do that is to maybe record your MIDI track and then maybe play it in real time and record it onto another track, which again, seems like, you know, year 2000 technology. You should be able to because Luna gives you some really cool virtual instruments that record in MIDI. Why wouldn't you be able to easily convert that to audio at one point in your session? Again, may not be a big deal for everyone, but for some people that is a big deal. Um, and so that's another feature that I think would be great. Uh, a simple feature that every modern DAW can do. I think they need to be able to do that. Um, another item or a point that I've heard some other people say, and, and I'm not sure that this is, so let me just mention it. So when you get Luna, Luna's a free DAW, but it doesn't come with any, um, batch of plugins at all, any stock plugins. The only plugins you, you have available to you are the either the universal audio plugins you already own or any third party plugins you already have. So if you're someone brand new to recording and you picked up a little universal audio interface um, and you downloaded Luna on your Mac, um, you don't have a core set of plugins. Now, where I think uh, the, the reason they may have done this, um, and this is again, kind of, I'm not really sure if this is a, if a huge, uh, you know, uh, foo pa on their end, is that when you buy a universal audio interface, again, it, it, at least at the recording of this video, and again, it, it's changed in the, it's been different in the past, and I'm sure it'll change in the future to some degree, is that you usually get, as part of that hardware, a free uh, of the legacy plugin. So in other words, you get the 1176, the Pultec, the LA-2A, the, I think the Fairchild, maybe another couple other plugins. Um, the legacy versions, the older versions, I think come free as part of that hardware. And therefore you'd be able to use that in Luna. I believe that is the way it kind of works. But outside of that, there are no other plugins that really come with this. And the plugins, like I said, that come with the hardware are the oldest plugins that they have. Nothing new and grew, newer or or, or, or improved or, or re-emulated or anything like that. So again, I think it would be smart to include some plugins with this thing. Um, so you're not starting from scratch with universal audio plugins. So again, maybe something for them to think about. Maybe there's another way, uh, another reasoning for it that maybe someone could comment below and let me know. But I, I found that and also heard a couple of people kind of upset about that. So I wanted to kind of put that out there. And then the last thing, which I think is point number eight or point number nine, I lost track, is the plugin you see right on the screen here in front of you, this Neve Summon console. Now, the reason why, or one of the main reasons why Luna was so intriguing to a lot of people is number one, Universal Audio has always made fantastic hardware, fantastic plugins. So for them to jump into the DAW space was really a, an eye opener for everyone because they always put out great stuff and you would think this would be a great DAW and maybe one day it will be a great DAW. Um, and they put out great plugins. This Neve Summing plugin, um, which you which doesn't come with Luna, and here's my beef with it. This is a three hundred dollar add-on. That's right. As of the recording of this video, it's a three hundred dollar plugin. It's not free. 
You can demo it for 14 days, which is what I've done. And I've done last week, uh, I posted a video where we listened to it and it does sound decent. Sounds good. Um, I've heard other YouTubers, you know, that, that have reviewed Luna say how amazing the same, the Neve plugin is, how glorious I've heard that word used and thrown around a bunch. And I can tell you from someone who mixes lots of sessions that have used lots of different analog style plugins, does this thing, uh, an amazing plugin? No, it's a decent plugin. How does it stack up to something like the Waves non-linear summing plugin or the Slate Digital VCC, which is not exactly the same, but it tries to it tries to achieve the same kind of vibe. I say it's on par. Is it head and shoulders above those plugins? No. Is it a three? Is it worth a three hundred dollar upgrade when you get Luna? No. Is it worth a hundred dollar upgrade? Maybe a hundred bucks. I was really disappointed to see that this is the $300 plugin. To me, that's absurd for that plugin. This is the main reason why people are, were looking to Luna, I think, especially as a mixing engineer, that, oh, you were gonna have analog Neve summing built into the DAW. How amazing is that for 300 bucks? I think, again, that's a big, big, uh, again, should it be free? I don't know that it should be free. They're giving you a free tape plugin, the tape oxide plugin, which is a cool tape plugin. I've already owned it, but it does come free with Luna. That's probably a $150 plugin. Okay, that's a nice plugin. But I really think they should have they should have included the tape machine and the summing. If you would have added those two plugins together with this, that would have been a big difference. Or at the very least, you know, maybe not free, but 300 bucks is absurd for that plugin, I think. Um, again, just my opinion. All the haters will comment below, I'm sure. And again, I'm saying this as someone who loves Universal Audio and I love their plugins. And if you go check any of my courses on my website or have looked through my YouTube videos, I have an entire playlist of Universal Audio plugins where I've done dozens and dozens of videos on their plugins. They make fantastic stuff. I'm a fanboy of Universal Audio. I love them, I have a huge system. It's not a $300 plugin. It's just not. It doesn't sound that good. You can use the, the Waves plugin, third-party plugin. You can use the Slate VCC and achieve almost the same sound. Is it a little different because it's a different type of thing and we model the Neve thing and this and that? Yeah, I understand that. I know analog style plugins probably better than most. I have an entire course on my website dedicated to how those plugins work. It's over 15 hours long. Link will be in the description box if you want to check it out. Mixing with analog style plugins made easy. So I'm very familiar with the way these things work and the way they sound. It is a good sounding plugin. It's not a $300 plugin. And to me, that was a big letdown. Universal Audio makes the most expensive plugins on the market for the most part. And a lot of them are worth the money. I've done lots of reviews on them, as I've said, but not this one. To me, I won't use Luna just for the fact that I'm not going to spend 300 bucks on this plugin. If it was 100 bucks, I would buy it not 300 bucks. So if I'm not gonna use the Neve Summer, why would I use Luna as, a, as, the mixing, as my mixing DAW? Now for the recording side of things, I know it's a little different because you, uh, you could record into Luna with no latency using all the analog style plugins, but you could have done that before Luna with the console application, right? You could have done that before. So why would I use Luna? What would, what would set this apart that would make me switch from my DAW, which happens to be PreSona Studio One, but regardless of that, Cubase, Pro Tools, Studio One, Logic, Ableton, whatever. Why would I use this over that when I could have always recorded through their plugins with no latency? Um, Luna's a little bit cleaner of a system. It's a little bit, you know, laid out kind of nice, but is there anything here that's just so amazing? Not really. Um, not any more than any other DAW, in my opinion, again, and I use them all. Um, the Neve Summing would have been one of those things to really say, wow, no DAW has that. Not $300, not even close. So again, it's the first version of Luna. I know a lot of people and people are gonna bash me in the comments, I'm sure for being overly critical. Um, I think all DAWs, their first release, um, is always not the best. And um, over time, hopefully they will add some of these features into Luna to really make it compete because I think Universal Audio makes amazing things. And if they really work on this to make it um, something different, something better, something more user-friendly, giving something here that you can't get somewhere else, 
I think would convert a lot of people to the universal audio ecosystem that isn't already a part of that. To get people to buy one of their pieces of hardware or their interface to jump into the ecosystem, you have to make it attractive. Yes, Luna is a free DAW, only if you have a Mac, which is astonishing to me that they didn't make this PC compatible when they released it. But nevertheless, um, and I'm a Mac user, but <laughs> anyhow, um, but there's gotta be something beyond the fact that it's a free DAW. There's gotta be something there, you know? If it was a free DAW, um, or if the DAW was 99 bucks and you threw in the Neve summing, I don't know, there has to be a better way to do it. I think the rollout of this thing was, was, wasn't the greatest by Universal Audio. I think, you know, there was a lot of hype and NAM about it. And I think it's got a lot of good points and you can watch my other videos to see what I like about it. But I think they dropped the ball on these eight or nine points. And hopefully somebody will see it and uh, someone will go ahead and maybe, you know, if there's enough people asking for these features, they'll add them. But so um, would I recommend Luna right now to switch over to Luna from another DAW that you've already been using? I would say at this point, May 20th, 2020, no. Stick with the DAW that you have. There's too many things lacking in Luna, in my opinion, and I've only scratched the surface. I can imagine the more I would work with it, the more things I would find that you're just not intuitive enough, just not user-friendly enough, and doesn't make sense to really switch over. You're not really gaining anything here that you couldn't do before, either in your other DAW, along with the console software from a recording standpoint, or certainly from a mixing standpoint. There's really nothing here that I've seen yet that makes me say this is better than the DAW that I've already used for mixing. So I want to know what you think. Leave comments below and let me know. And try to be, uh, you know, let's not be nasty. You know, if you want to disagree, we want to have a little, you know, a little combative uh, disagreement, that's fine. But keep things clean. Keep things, you know, on the up and up. Let's be respectful. Let me know what you think. If you're using Luna and you think, Dave, you're completely wrong and this is why, I'd love to know. Go ahead. Leave your points below. Let's start a conversation. Convince me that this is worth me leaving my DAW for. Convince me that that's, that Neve summing plugin is worth 300 bucks. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Comment below. Now, I said I want to give you a free gift for listening to my rant about Luna, and I want to do that right now. If this is your first time here at the Home Recording Made Easy YouTube channel, welcome to the family. I want to give you five free mixing training courses. Yes, that's right. Five free courses worth a couple of hundred bucks. Head on over to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Right on the homepage, click on the big orange button, get your five free mixing training courses. You get all the video training, all the audio files, so you can mix the song along with me, and you can put those audio files into Luna or Pro Tools or Q Cubase or Logic or Studio One or whatever your favorite DAW is, and you can mix the song along with me. Five free courses. And speaking of mixing, if you really want to learn the craft of mixing in a non-technical way, and you want to learn all about these different types of plugins and how to use them most effectively and get a new song to mix every single month and join a community of home recording musicians and aspiring audio engineers to get better at the craft of mixing, then you got to check out what I have going on at MixingMadeEasy.net. All the links will be in the description box below. And for a limited time, I want to give you a 40% discount on our annual membership at MixingMadeEasy.net. That's right, 40% off. Click the links in the description box below. Go check it out. And until next week's video, I've been Dave with HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and MixingMadeEasy.net. And I will see you guys next week. Take care.